Um, welcome back, uh, everyone, um, to this uh, side event uh, on adaptation at altitude, solutions and action in East African mountains. As you know, this event is part of the Africa Climate Week. And this, this event is intended to contribute to uh, the adaptation um, at altitude program towards increasing knowledge on climate change and appropriate adaptation solutions in mountains and feeding into science policy platforms for informed decisions, making a national, regional and uh, global policy process. Uh, this session brings together um, actors and experts from the uh, governmental institutions, uh, private sector, uh, civil society, the academia and the development uh, uh, agencies to bring together ideas and insight and experience at the table uh, so that uh, uh, we come up with uh, practical solutions to contribute to um, adaptation to um, climate change in the East African mountains for not only for communities, but also for mountain ecosystems. So um, as we maintain the same program as we did last time, and we apologize for the technical inconvenience that happened, uh, we will have uh, on the agenda, we will have uh, again opening remarks um, by uh, uh, three or uh, four people. Uh, we have some Dr. Sam from Marcos, we have uh, E.C. Daniel from UNEP, we have uh, a representative from the Ministry of Water and Environment, and uh, finally we have also um, um, someone from uh, EAC, East African Community, followed by uh, some highlights uh, about the adaptation at altitude program for East Africa, and uh, we hope that EC Daniel is there for UNEP to present. And next we'll have uh, a presentation from Arcos by uh, Jof, uh, Godfrey Mwesige, um, on, pre on the preliminary findings on adaptation solutions in East Africa mountain areas. Then we'll have um, a discussion, a panel discussion that will be uh, conducted by two people, two panelists. We have uh, Anino Morin and uh, Engineer Ladislaus, uh, Ladislaus Leonidas. And then after we'll have a plenary session that will be closed by a way forward and a conclusion. So without any further ado, let me hand over um, to um, Dr. Sam for again for another opening remarks. Thank you very much. Over now to you, Dr. Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. William. I'm, I'm feeling uh, actually refreshed after the technical problems we had last time. It is always nice to bounce back. And uh, I can see that a number of people are uh, available again. So very happy and welcome everybody. Uh, I want to thank particularly the government of Uganda uh, to host this event and also the Africa Climate Week team to allow ARCOS and the partners, the South African community, the UN Environment and the Grid Arendal, uh, to share and discuss some of the climate adaptation solutions we have been able to compile from stakeholders here in East Africa that I also take the opportunity to, call, to, to thank for the time to share what we have here in East Africa uh, affecting African mountains and how efforts are being done to adapt to climate change. The, there is no need to demonstrate that climate change is with us and particularly in mountain ecosystems, because they are very fragile, yet very important. They are the water towers we have. They provide numerous services from the water, the food, the energy we use, 
the habitat for a number of species. Indeed, they are very important for the economy of our countries here in Africa. So to see some of the initiatives, some of the efforts being done to adapt to the natural hazard, to the soil erosion we face, to the land degradation, it is quite remarkable. We have been able to compile some of the case studies and I'm really very impressed by what is going on. And uh, we will have the opportunity to just grasp a little bit of what is going on. But I must say that the challenges we have are enormous. In fact, what we see, there are just a few drops in a huge ocean because the climate change is accelerating the degradation of environment and the impact on poverty, the increasing pests and the disease, the human well-being, the livelihoods, we see the impact accelerating. So there is a need for more efforts and particularly for governments to take more commitment to integrate sustainable mountain development in agenda. And also different uh, development partners, uh, the funding agencies to put a priority to mountains because they are the source of life for different services they provide. So I think that uh, this is an opportunity we can look at what is going on, but also call for more action. I take this opportunity to thank again the contributors who have submitted the case studies. I'm very proud of the team which has been working on this, and I hope that during these deliberations, we can be inspired by what is going on. Thank you all for your availability, and I hope you are going to have a very nice deliberation and have a good day. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sam. Um, let's segue uh, to uh, AC Daniel from UNEP. Over now to you, uh, AC Daniel. Uh, William, uh, sorry, I think we had changed, Mr. Archer. I think it's Her Excellency to speak uh, after Sam. Oh, OK, thank you very much for the correction. So yeah, over now to you. Um, uh, 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 the ministry, uh, the person Malati from the Ministry of Water and Environment, if I caught it well. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly? We can hear you very well. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, all our development partners representatives of ministries, departments and agencies from across Africa and Uganda that are online with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Anino and on behalf of the Ministry of Water and Environment, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this side event. As you are aware, our ministry is hosting the Africa Climate Week on behalf of the government of Uganda and I convey Greetings from my permanent secretary that is unable to join us because he's officiating at other 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 functions. And I would like to start by stating that um, we are all aware that uh, the African continent is well endowed with mountains, which are some of the most prominent in the region. We have in East Africa, particularly, we have the Renzori Mountains, we have the Kilimanjaro Mountains, we have the Mount Elgon, we have Virunga and Mount Kenya. And in these regions, in this region of East Africa, these mountains play an important role in economic development, poverty alleviation, 
and they provide environmental goods and services that even extend beyond the mountains themselves, but across the entire region. The previous uh, speaker has already mentioned about the various, some of the uses about the mountains being uh, the, the, the sole water source in the region, but also mountains are a major source of water where we get hydropower. And you know that hydropower is one of the main energy sources in this region. And therefore, this is very important for development in the region. Mountains are also very rich in biodiversity and therefore significantly contribute to tourism in the region. However, these mountains are fragile and prone to various climatic change related threats, as well as human induced threats, which impair their capacity to provide crucial environmental services. The Ministry of Water and Environment, which is responsible for mountain sustainable mountain development in Uganda, recognizes these threats and have over the past years made a few efforts. One of these is, I'm sure we are now all aware that um, the Climate Change Act was assented to by the president, if it, I think a month or two ago. But the ministry also developed the Uganda National Sustainable Mountain Development Strategy in 2016. And the goal of this strategy is to maintain, enhance the conservation, the health, the vitality, and stewardship of mountain ecosystems for their inherent value and for the mutual benefit of mountain communities. The, the ministry also, through the ecosystem based adaptation project, built two adaptation learning centers in the Mount Elgon region to provide climate change related information to the communities in this area. And the, the ministry right now is involved in various projects in the mountain ecosystems. And we would like to thank our partners, UN Environment and uh, the Albertine Regional Conservation Society for the support that they've so far rendered to the ministry in implementing those various projects. Regionally, the ministry together with other ministries, departments and agencies has also actively participated in development of the East African Community Climate Change Policy, the Climate Change Master Plan, and the ESC Protocol on Environment and Natural Resources. What remains now is putting into action and implementing the various regional frameworks. The implementation of these frameworks is very important for mountains, sustainable mountains development, especially given the transboundary nature of the mountains and the other critical ecosystems. However, despite the progress that we have made, I wish to point out a few challenges that affect sustainable mountain development in the region. First and foremost is that all these countries in the ESC have individual frameworks for mountains development. The ESC will develop more from a harmonized framework that specifically targets sustainable mountains development. Also, mountains development is very expensive and yet the region is already faced by inadequate resources for other environment and natural resource purposes. There is a lot of pressure from infrastructure projects as well as agricultural activities, and this has compromised the ability of these mountains to provide these critical goods and services. Lastly, we are all aware that the transboundary nature of most of our mountains in this region also complicate their management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Water and Environment, allow me to thank ACOS, UN Environment, and the other partners for organizing this event, as well as for the support towards the Adaptation at Altitude program. It is my hope that this program will generate information that will be used to guide decision-making for better sustainable mountains development. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I wish you all a fruitful Africa Climate Week. Shalom. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Anino Maureen. Uh, this time, I'm so happy that uh, your uh, speech got through. <laughs> Last time, it was interrupted. <laughs> and thank you for the good, very, very interesting remarks. So on the uh, um, agenda, we were expecting um, Engineer Ladislas to speak, so I'm not sure if he's available. Godfrey can confirm. Godfrey can confirm if uh, Ladislas yeah, is there. Yeah, you can see him in the list, he's there. Okay. So now uh, let's uh, hand over to um, Ladislas for um, another re opening remark. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Good morning. So I'm going to hear me. Good morning. Uh, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, good morning all. I uh, thank you very much, uh, Akosi. Thank you, uh, UNEPO, because I know you are, you are, we have the project together. And, uh, and uh, we thank you very much to the organizer for the, let me put the video for the, for the uh, climate week. And we know that uh, it is a uh, challenge, but uh, we manage it. And uh, thank, of course, you managed to get it. I know we missed it on Sunday. So congratulations on, on this one. Yeah, for us as the East Africa Community Secretariat, uh, with our partner states, for us, this is very important week because of the climate change. And, and as you know, um, Africa is uh, vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, despite that we are contributing the less. And uh, the East Africa community is one of the regions within of the sub regions within Africa we are really impacted. So we thought that this meeting, this side event, is very important to our experience, and uh, we look forward to that uh, you will, for the meaningful discussions during the the event uh, today. Of course, in the course of the week, in the in the coming week. Yeah, for us, you, you know we. In fact, uh, when we talk about uh, the, the ecosystems that are impacted by the climate change, you know, as East Africa, we the, we we have the the highest mountain, you know, the mountain Kibanjaro, uh, and uh, this is uh, it shares with the partner states, uh, uh, most uh, 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 Kenya and the and the United Republic of Tanzania. So when we see that uh, the agenda of the climate change and the, and the mountains ecosystems for us is very key. And uh, of course, we have other uh, ecosystems in the, the region, of course, uh, that are supporting our, our mountains ecosystems. So we, we are looking forward to make sure that uh, we, the actions that uh, we really enhance the, the, the the resilience to the communities around the the, the mountains. Uh, we you know that as a region about seven more than eighty percent is a dependence on the biomass, and uh, that means the biomass for us when we have the community dependence in such amount, then our ecological ecosystems like the mountains they are really really in the vulnerable situation. So we are looking forward that, uh, that should, as a climate change, that is an opportunity to reduce the pressure to the ecosystems. So I think in this side events that uh, we, we should come out with the actions, like how now do we tackle the issue of the biomass dependence? We know that the issue of the land size and uh, we have the communities encroaching in the urbanization, of course, that is also reduce the dependence to the, to the mountains ecosystems. Uh, these are the issues that we think that uh, we need to move forward. As a community, we have the climate change policy that was adopted in 2011. We have the climate change master plan, the next 20 years, 2011 to 2031. And now we are embarked on the implementation of the, of the sustainable development goals uh, adopted in 2015, you see. All these ones now, they are giving us the, the opportunities and the, and the role to play. So we... As we, we look forward to working with the ACOC, UNEP, or um, other partners, uh, for us it's quite important. 
And uh, you know, at COM, no, Go17 is about partnership. So for us, it's quite important that um, we engage the different partners, we engage the business group, the civil society uh, organ organizations. You see, for us, this is very key. In that context, we, we as a community, we have also uh, moved forward to to take as a, the mountain agenda as key, where also the issue of the climate change uh, actions strategies we we look forward because we have the, also the Paris Agreement, uh, the roadmap for the implementation of which we have said that adaptation is the key for us, but also we enhance the mitigation actions in the context of the of of having the co benefits to the adaptation actions of the region. So we, that's where we are, and uh, we are looking forward to have you for this event, and uh, we are here to participate as, as a community. But uh, we, the key message for us is uh, we have the motto here, one people, one destiny. So all the actions we are doing is to know how to enhance the resilience of the communities, the tangible to the local communities where they have a much dependence to the mountains ecosystems. So I thank you very much, and uh, we wish you fruitful discussions during this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Ladislas. Uh, we are happy that uh, the, um, the mountain agenda is one of the, your highest priority uh, here in East Africa. Uh, and, and, and now, um, as we want to keep up with the time. So let's move on with the presentation from, uh, from uh, DC Daniel uh, from UNEP on the highlights about the adaptation at Attitude Program for East Africa. Over now to you, DC Daniel. Um, thank you, William. Godfrey, um, are you able to share the PowerPoint? If you, 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 I, I could possibly okay. share it as well. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. do it for you. Um, it's not letting me. Uh, let us try to share it from here. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's, it's okay it's now. now. It's yeah, okay. I can see it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time uh, to participate and contribute uh, to the topic on uh, East African mountains. Um, First of all, I would like to thank the government of uh, Uganda for hosting this session and all the partners for taking the time and effort um, to organize it. Uh, my name is Say Daniel. Uh, I work with the United Nations Environment Program, uh, mostly on climate change adaptation project with uh, a focus on ecosystem based adaptation and uh, nature based solution in sub Saharan Africa. Um, we have already heard from uh, previous speakers uh, on the various ecosystem services that mountains provide and their importance to um, socioeconomic development in the region. Um, UNEP, with support from uh, various partners, is engaged at addressing the risks and uh, um, challenges that climate risk poses uh, to various important uh, ecosystems, of which, of course, mountains is uh, one. Um, this can be tracked by the various projects and programs and frameworks that UNEP has been developed, developing in the region of mountains. And uh, of course, the various programs that have also been implemented, such as the mountain EBA program, and of course, uh, more recently, the adaptation at uh, altitude. Um, while the ri rising um, temperatures and changing uh, and precipitation patterns are disrupting ecosystem services and and threatening livelihoods across Africa, uh, mountain ecosystems uh, 
have been found to be more sensitive um, uh, to climate change compared to um, other terrestrial ecosystems. Um, and mountain uh, communities are, of course, more on the verge, on average, uh, 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 more vulnerable economically uh, to their downstream counterparts. Uh, other result was the effects of uh, uh, climate change in the mountains are felt uh, more acutely on both ecosystems and people in mountains. Um, with this in mind, in 2020, um, UNEP, uh, ZOE Network, Geneva University, um, uh, Stockholm Environment Institute, Arcos, and, and a number of other uh, partners, original partners, and with uh, the support of the Swiss Agency Development and Cooperation, Maybe you can uh, put the presentation. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry, it's turning off my screen. If I do that, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's OK now. But you can put in a okay. presentation presentation mode. OK, um, hopefully everyone can see the screen. Um, yes, so I was saying UNEP with uh, partners uh, um, and with support from uh, the Swiss Agency for the Development and Cooperation launched the Adaptation and Attitude program. Um, this is a collaborative program that aims at improving the availability and use of uh, mountain observation data. Um, it facilitates um, science policy dialogues, uh, supports um, a community of practice, uh, and knowledge exchange on adaptation solution and try and try to influence uh, policy processes. Um, the project is currently working in three regions, uh, namely the South Caucasus, the Hindu Kush Himalaya and the Andes. Um, in East Africa, the project is uh, currently working on establishing um, a knowledge base of adaptation options and best practices uh, in regional mountain ecosystems while putting a strong emphasis on ecosystem based adaptation options and um, nature based uh, solution. Um, in partnership. In partnership uh, with uh, Grid Arndal and Arcos, um, a stock take of adaptation solutions and uh, technologies have been compiled and uh, best practices prioritized to support closing knowledge gaps and support upscaling and uptaking um, within the East uh, African region. Uh, the project. Um, the project will also. Uh, the, I mean, the project will also work closely with regional bodies, uh, you know, such as the East African community, um, national governments and their respective frameworks, including you know, the technical working groups at regional level all the way to national adaptation plans at the local level to ensure transboundary cooperation uh, towards a sustainable mountain ecosystem development. Um, while, while COVID has, uh, uh, of course, you know, slowed down the project objective progress um, in the last year, um, we aim to make up for the lost time um, soon with the project delivering on um, the publishing of a mountain adaptation solutions booklet, um, trying to also enhance and foster policy dialogue and cooperation for adaptation in mountain areas among the members um, of the East African community. And this will be done through a series of uh, regional meetings and discussions with uh, relevant uh, stakeholders. And then an exchange on concrete solutions. Once we have completed the previous activity, we will have an exchange of concrete solutions, best practices, and potentials for scaling up and further cooperation among mountain and climate change stakeholders uh, of, you know, of East Africa. And then finally, have an interregional. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, the project is active in three regions, and we aim to have an interregional acting um, action learning and exchange with the other uh, mountain regions. Um, yeah, for the sake of time, I will finish here, but feel free uh, to contact myself or any of the, my colleagues that are uh, uh, mentioned uh, at the bottom or access our website and follow us on the various social platforms.
I, yes, and um, I would like, of course, um, you know, to wish everyone a wonderful day and continue on uh, deliberation in, in the uh, upcoming session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Isi Daniel, for providing a panoramic overview of um, the efforts you are deploying in East Africa in collaboration with uh, Arcos uh, and uh, uh, Grid Arena. Um, in providing, trying to provide solution, ecosystem-based solutions to adaptation uh, to climate change. Thank you very much. Um, over now to um, another presenter who is uh, Wolfram Wesigia from Marcos, who is going to present on the preliminary findings on adaptation solutions in East African mountain area. Over now to you, um, Godfrey. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, a very good morning. Uh, may I confirm if you can uh, see my screen? Yes, we yes. can see the screen. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, once again, uh, a very good morning uh, to all. And uh, my name is uh, Godfrey Mwesije. I work with the ACOS network as the regional uh, policy officer. And I'll be uh, uh, taking us through some of the uh, preliminary findings we have been we already have about the information we collected about uh, the adaptation solutions uh, in the east african mountains yeah so my presentation uh, overview re really i will speak about the adaptation solutions uh, by defining uh, by defining them then uh, i'll give about the findings from the six countries in the region that is burundi Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. And then uh, at a later point, we shall have some insights from uh, one of the stakeholders uh, who shared an adaptation solution, and this will be uh, Ms. Uh, Sarah uh, Chidongo from uh, Virunga. And then I uh, will conclude. Yeah, so uh, what are the adaptation solutions? So our definition that we use uh, for adaptation solutions, uh, we call them those that address one or several mountain specific challenges and exploit opportunities to adapt to the changing uh, future environments. And uh, the methodology really that we use to collect this information, we of course we began with uh, identifying the different uh, stakeholders and uh, people to provide us uh, with this information and really based on what we were considering to be an adaptation solution we were looking at what uh, issue is there in that mountain area uh, what is that specific climate change issue uh, in the region and then we uh, we ident we were looking at what solution is being provided to address that issue then also we looked at its coverage and the impact and then again at uh, its applicability uh, I'll begin with uh, Burundi, and um, uh, one of uh, the, uh, I must say there were several solutions that were provided to us, and we did really a screening, and we were coming up with uh, 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 the ones we considered and agreed upon from uh, uh, each of the countries. And in Burundi, one of the solutions uh, I'll start with is the climate resilient altitudinal gradients, uh, which is in Ruwa and Muhira catchment. So this project uh, is, is uh, it was supported by Bad Life International and uh, a local NGO um, in in this area, and really it was to uh, uh, address the issues of soil erosion on the steep slopes and to ensure that the people in 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 this area adapt by uh, also having interventions like. Uh, uh, smart agriculture and then also another one is, is uh, about uh, agroforestry and native uh, species planting and this is in uh, Bubanza and Buri provinces so uh, in this in this in this um, in the in these provinces really uh, the 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 people in the in the communities um, were integrating uh, planting the tree species uh, with uh, they are uh, they are farming, especially the crop farming, and 
as a way of ensuring that uh, they adapt to the different uh, uh, climate uh, uh, changes and, and effects, uh, especially the erosions also, uh, but also, uh, the, the, uh, as we all, all know, the, the benefits of agroforestry are uh, supporting also those farms. So, and these these were improving uh, the farming in the region as previously um, the yields were low. And uh, with this innovation, with uh, from the information that we got, we saw an improvement in the agriculture, but also which in turn improved the people's uh, livelihoods there and food security. Then another uh, another one is uh, landscape uh, restoration and cre uh, resilience project, uh, which is in uh, Muyinga provinces and uh, the communities of uh, uh, Buhi Nyuza and Bisai. So uh, the picture you see there, uh, that is uh, 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 a lady who, who was uh, uh, watering uh, the, 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 seed, the seedlings and uh, in that province so they were restoring uh, the landscape but also ensuring that there is a resilience uh, in the communities as, as you may all know actually what we found out uh, in, the, in the entire region of course we, we know that the majority of the people in the communities are involved in agriculture and in farming so the interventions uh, you'll find that most of them are trying to address the uh, impacts that really target agriculture and they are creating the, really, the resilience uh, in that sector. Uh, then uh, I'll move on to Kenya and uh, I found uh, another, other interesting uh, interventions or what, uh, the adaptation solutions. Uh, there's trout fish farming uh, in Mount Kenya and this is uh, done by the youth groups uh, in, in the Kenyan mountains. Uh, especially uh, addressing uh, the issue of uh, climate change that has uh, been affecting the, the youth uh, as they lose uh, many of the projects uh, like agricultural projects are not doing well and others. So to sustain their livelihood, uh, they started uh, trout fish farming. And what is most interesting is that they are earning a lot and there is a huge market uh, in, in Kenya and another interesting thing is that these uh, uh, the, the trout fish farming is carried out in really very, very cold waters. And it is really very interesting uh, to interest everybody uh, to get interested in this. It, it, it doesn't survive in, uh, uh, the fish doesn't survive in other uh, waters, say like Victoria, but it is specific to uh, some of uh, those very cold waters. And uh, the youth, uh, we are doing great and uh, really adapting and I uh, hope they are being helped to improve uh, their livelihoods by earning uh, a living from uh, from their trout fish farming. Uh, another one is uh, the household level biogas and dairy farming uh, in the Nyandara mountains. And uh, what is interesting about the, this uh, household level uh, biogas use and dairy farming is that the farmers with uh, with the different changes of course affecting um, most of the activities the droughts and what so uh, the the farmers resorted to dairy farming and they don't just stop at dairy farming what they do is um, they also use it to generate uh, biogas for their home cooking what this does is that the uh, they reduce on even cutting more trees uh, for firewood and charcoal. So in turn, they also again uh, find themselves con conserving uh, the environment. And then another interesting one uh, is the elephant and bees. Uh, yeah, just to say that uh, the household uh, level biogas is also supported by the, the ministry, uh, the, the different uh, ministries in Kenya, including the Ministry of Environment. Yeah, then another one is the Elephant and Bees project, and this is really very interesting in that, uh, uh, and this is in the Taita Hills. It is very interesting in that the people in the communities uh, are addressing the issue of uh, human wildlife conflict, and uh, what they do is to find, um, they, they are very innovative, I must say, is that they do beekeeping, but not just for the sake, but they use uh, uh, bees to scare away the elephants from attacking uh, their 
uh, from attacking their gardens and crops. So it is also a very innovative way uh, that you find uh, people are adapting to, uh, as you as we know that human wildlife conflict is uh, it's because of the change in nature and climate and uh, it, the elephants start uh, attacking uh, the, the crops and people and again uh, people are attacking them. So this has also helped the people in, in uh, the communities of Taita Hills uh, and they, they sell honey also and from that but also they have their, their gardens and farms protected from uh, the elephants. Uh, Left, sorry uh, to interrupt. Be quick, try to be quick. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Yes, thank you. So I'll speak uh, on, about Rwanda and the terracing for agriculture. You can see the image there and how the terraces uh, really look nice. And then uh, uh, that is in Gichumbi and uh, landscape approach to forest restoration and conservation. And that is uh, in Gishwati Mukura landscape. Um, then also, uh, as we know that uh, the issue of water uh, resource management, so there's a project on um, embedding integrated water resource management, uh, and that is uh, in Rusiro uh, and uh, Nyahibo and other com uh, provinces uh, and other communities in the Western province uh, in Rwanda. Then Tanzania has also other interesting uh, solutions we picked out, um, uh, including uh, uh, alternative uh, activities for alternative livelihoods, uh, such as beekeeping in, uh, in Zingwa Mountains, also ecotourism, which is uh, really very, very interesting in that people do tourism, including local tourism, and also attracting other tourists. But as they do this, they also conserve uh, the nature. Then there is another one, the Endeavor Water Harvesting Technology. This is uh, in Makaya Mountain, where the people really use the local technology to uh, store, to harvest and store the water uh, for their gardens. Uh, Uganda, uh, another one which uh, I'll speak about, uh, I'll go this uh, very quickly. Uh, Atari irrigation scheme, this is in the Elgons, and it supports uh, a rice farming, uh, rice growing, and it, we have seen um, uh, it do well uh, in, in the Elgon uh, region, that is in the eastern part. Uh, of Uganda, so the irrigation is to really address the issues uh, of water stress in some areas. Then also sustainable beekeeping in the Rezoi Mountains. This is uh, in Kasese district in Kenya, and this is really a, a, a good uh, example that we got in that the women participate a lot uh, in this sustain, uh, sustainable beekeeping, and they are able also to uh, support the, their their livelihoods and they have improved. I will just uh, I uh, invite uh, Sarah, who is one of, uh, of the people that provide, uh, that shared with us an adaptation solution that is a uh, Water for Virunga project. I think for the interest of time, Sarah, you, uh, you can come in and share with us some insights uh, about the project, really the impact it has created uh, in the Virungas. Uh, you may not do the presentation, but you can speak to us in, in just a few minutes. Like, uh, all right, thank you so much, Godfrey, and uh, good morning to um, everybody. Um, maximum respect to all the previous presenters. My name is Chigongo Sarah Kagwa, um, the project officer for International Goya Conservation Program. Quickly, um, I've, we've just finished. Uh, consortium project on, on water for Virunga in the sub-counties of Mugahinga, Goya National Park. And uh, basically, we were one, working on uh, four interventions, on one on increasing access to safe water, while also working on um, um, reducing human wildlife conflict, and also on soil and water conservation, as well as uh, improving household integrated planning uh, to ensure the increase on the productivity and income households. And uh, it was a funding from the Netherlands Embassy and it was implemented uh, with, together with the 
with our, our Greater Virunga Transboundary Collaboration, International Gallery Conservation Program, Wagengen University, Managing Development, uh, MDF, as well as UWA, National Water and Soil District Local Government. The major goal was to reduce conflict through increased access to safe water and improved watershed management in the transboundary Virunga areas in Uganda, Rwanda and Congo. But for this case, I will specifically talk about Uganda. What were our impacts? At least from all the engagements, it was a four year project. It started in 2016 and it ended this year and, and uh, in, in May. One of the impacts was improved relations between communities and, and, and uh, park authorities. This is something that is that also the park authorities are proud of because we'll do uh, community engagement awareness and we put radio talk shows and now the people can actually know the value and the importance of their nearness to the national park. We find that they have they are they, are, they have now uh, improved uh, their relationship to inspect illegal activities within the park. They have put uh, community bylaws and uh, we hope there is an improved cohabitation between the wildlife and the humans. Uh, we worked in 16 villages and uh, in, within the area and our target population on water specifically was 19,512 people and with a projection of serving 25 and 500,000 people by 2033 according to the project and the project was was the water project was having covered about 34 kilometers uh, who were pushing water uh, i think for all the people who know that the mgahinga area uh, mgahinga grand national area it has been a water stress area uh, and uh, and a jerrican has been costing someone can help me here to take to put in two dollars but uganda shillings is is 2000 a jerrican which not even any rich family can afford only 20 liters you pay 2000 uganda shillings for dollars i don't know good you can help me but with our intervention the project intervention we've seen um a jerrican go Gate jerry can of water, but with after the intervention, one is paying the same amount and is getting 40 jerry cans of water. Why Thank did you. we choose this? Because there was a great conflict. Hello, there was a big... you can conclude. Okay, there was a big conflict between the, 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 the people and the park, they would illegally enter when it is they're really hard on heat had they would enter the park illegally to get water or you'd find streams of, of lines for people that are begging the, 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 the park authorities to enter but to enter the park to get water and the water was was being shared between the the the, the, the animals and people and and other vegetation so i think in brief that's what i can say because it's a lot on 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 human wildlife conflict which we we managed to to put uh a, a, a buffer wall to to connect and reduce the the, the animal crop raiding about 1.2 kilometers but it was a stretch of 16 kilometers and also we planted erythrina to strengthen on the remaining part of the buffer wall about 35 um 500 and something species of, of, of erythrina to strengthen the buffer wall i think yeah, thank shortly, you. that's what i can thank you yeah Thank you very much for the, the overview on what is going on in, uh, in, uh, in the Virunga area in terms of uh, climate change adaptation. And maybe uh, we might get uh, details that people connect with you directly. Uh, so now it's time to um, move into a, the next session, which is more interactive. And we will have two panelists. Uh, we have uh, Anino Morin and we have Ladislas. And, um, so uh, we have a couple questions we would like to start with, and then we'll have another other questions for the audience. Uh, about uh, four questions for the audience. So let me uh, probably start with uh, Maureen. Having question: uh, What can be the lessons for Uganda from the adaptation solutions 
in other East African countries? Over now to you, Maureen. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. William. Uh, a, quick, a few quick points that I noted from the other countries which we can pick up. One, building resilience of communities as well as the mountains is key for sustainable for as a country we need to you know invest in uh, promoting livelihood options for the local communities we need to inv invest in both mitigation and adaptation solutions and also promote uh, coexistence between communities and the mountain ecosystems and this we also need to involve the mountain community in the management of the depend fully on the mountains. So if the mountains are not well protected, the communities also become more vulnerable. So we need to involve the community, but we need to state clear benefits. We need to have clear benefit sharing systems in place so that the, mount, the mountain community is no benefit. Then, um, as a country, we also need to involve, invest more in the management, conservation, and protection of mountains, because most of the most of the interventions we have are funded by mountains. So valuable. As a country, we should do economic valuation so that we we inform the decision makers so that they are aware of how much mountains contribute to our socioeconomic development. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Maureen, for uh, this, uh, these insights. And now I will go turn back to um, Ladislaus and ask the following question. Are there, are there opportunities for the East African community to promote the different adaptation solutions from the East African countries among the member states. The question is directed to uh, Ladislas. Oh. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't know. I was disabled. I don't know how. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Ah, yes. No, Please no, go ahead. As, as I said, uh, you see the opportunity is there. You see, we, as I said, we have the policy, or ESC policy for climate change adopted in uh, 10, 2011. This was adopted by the partner states. So this is the, the commitment by the, by the EAC. Uh, with the heads of state that uh, we have to undertake the climate change mitigation adaptation actions within the region. So the opportunity is there and uh, let me add also that uh, we are now working with the UNFC Secretariat to finalize the resource mobilization for climate financing in the region where we want to mobilize resources. So the opportunity is that uh, we have the also let me call the the Speak orders the SG uh, forum where we have the engagement of the of, of the partners. We have also the ESC Business Council where we are promoting the private sector. So the opportunity is very high where we want to engage all the stakeholders. The instruments are there, so uh, the resource mobilization plans are there, and the need for the communities are there. So we what for us as the COCOs, as the governments, as the government partners, anyone is to take the actions and already we are all the countries have adopted the Paris Agreement. They have also ratified the Convention on Climate Change. So you see, we have all the commitment, the political will. What we need is to mobilize resources and support the, the countries. That's what I can, I can provide my, my clarification. Thank you very much, Ladislas. So now the, I will turn over to um, the audience. If anybody, if anyone has to has anything to say, I would like to ask the following questions. Uh, the first one is: Do you know any other solutions that you feel are good examples in the region? 
So if so, what are the usual challenge, challenges or barriers for of taking up uh, 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 scale up of these solutions and what can bodies such as the EAC can do to support them? So this is open up to the audience. If you have an, uh, a contribution, you can raise your hand and speak. I can see hand. Uh, technical team can uh, allow the person to speak. Even the even the chair can uh, allow. Let's see. Uh, Doris, please unmute yourself and uh, and speak. Mute Doris. Can you can speak? Okay, thank you. But my camera, okay, my camera can also go on. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'll be very brief. I would just like to make a contribution on one of the solutions that was presented on Kenya. There's the one that um, was documented from Taita Hills on uh, elephant and bees. Um, just to provide some little bit of more information, that is a nature-based solution to adaptation to climate change. Among the Taita Hills community, they also use um, beekeeping as one of the approaches to raise revenue uh, income on the on the mountain areas as a way of adapting to to reduce the crop production and increasing uh, also food security. And um, what uh, another project came about recently in around 2009, they, they introduced now beekeeping to address the human wildlife conflicts. Because as you know, with the climate change, the elephants um, usually come to the crop areas. They even go up to the mountains looking for water and, and for food. But with the increasing uh, frequency of droughts, this became has become more frequent. The, the, the frequent, the, the community areas and agricultural areas much more frequently now. And uh, this project came and introduced now a beehive fence for the community to establish around the farms as a perimeter. They established the beehives around 10 meters apart. And when the elephants now come, when they try to enter the farm, they, they disturb the bees and the bees, uh, they make the stinging noise and they sting and also the buzzing noise that chases away the, the, the elephant. So they, this uh, has been found to be about 80% effective to reduce the crop rates on, on the farms. So it's still uh, a solution that has been introduced. It needs to be uh, scaled. And the benefit of this uh, solution is that it is easily manageable by the communities. It is very sustainable. Further, the bees are also important in um, pollinating the indigenous uh, food crops in the area. And that also now has another benefit of uh, increasing food security in the area. So I just wanted to highlight that very, very briefly in contribution. Do you question. see any challenge? Do you, do you think this can be scaled up to? Yes, it, it can uh, be scaled East up. East African mountains? Yes, it can be scaled up. The, the only challenge that the research has been found to uh, demonstrate that um, when it's too dry, then the occupation of the hives is uh, is very low. So, but this needs now research to understand why and to see how they can enhance the, the beehive occupation, especially probably by introducing uh, those species uh, that have flowers that attract the bees so that they can also that can be now another nature-based solution on top of that. So it is a, a, a solution that needs to be as scaled and further studies could be done to enhance the effectiveness of the bee occupation. Thank you very much, Muta Doris um, from AFF. AFF. Yes, I'm from AFF. Yes, I'm yes, to the next question. What can be done by the policy? Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we have a question. Okay, are you asking me another question? No, I'm asking to the audience in general. Ah, thank okay. you very much for your contribution. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. And greetings from the African Forest Forum. 
Yes, okay, you're welcome. Um, what can be, the next question is, what can be done by the policy actors at national level to ensure that there is common agenda for sustainable mountain development? Any thoughts on this, the audience? Uh, I repeat the question. Uh, the question is what can be done by the policy actors at national level to ensure that there is common agenda for sustainable mountain development? Um, maybe I can just give one example. Uh, sorry, my uh, raise your hand button is not working properly. This is a city. Yes, 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 go ahead. Mm. Yes, so I mean, um, we are seeing uh, more regularly that countries um, uh, are updating their national adaptation plans. And uh, most of these adaptation plans have um, sectoral assessments. Uh, to ensure that the adaptation uh, planning um, uh, also takes into effect the, sp the climate risks that uh, um, affect spe uh, specific ecosystems. So what we are also trying to, to do is to see how we can influence these national adaptation plans to carry out uh, sectoral assessments, but also ecosystem based climate risk assessments and based on that carry out an adaptation uh, planning process that uh, targets a specific ecosystem and in this case uh, mountain ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This is a very good uh, in, uh, contribution. And now we have a couple of questions remaining. One is the following one is the East African community supports the regional dialogue uh, and cooperation. Please highlight on the available frameworks to support regional dialogues for sustainable mountain development. What are those regional dialogues for sustainable mountain development? Anyone from the participants can uh, intervene. I beg your pardon on the question, Dr. William. Uh, so this, this says like this, the East African community supports the regional dialogue and cooperation. This is the statement. Now, now please, the question is now, to, it's about to highlight on the available frameworks that exist to support regional dialogues for sustainable mountain development. What are those uh, frameworks that exist already? I wanted to say something. I, I don't know. It might not be broadly uh, on East African community, but uh, where we, where we, we are located in the Virungas, we are working under the uh, Great Virunga Transboundary Collaboration, and it is the one that is helping us to 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 uh, uh, make dialogues on transboundary issues that are. Uh, that are within the, the, the management of the Virunga landscape and is their best offices in, in, in Chigali. Okay, thank you very much, Sarah Kibongo. Any other thoughts? Other platform? Just one. Uh, this is, uh, yes, Muta, can see where the name <laughs> Muta yes. Norris. Come on. Yes, thank you. Um, I I do have I do know of a, a framework that is um is actually is, is regional and therefore East Africa is covered there. There's the Sustainable Forest Management Policy Framework that was adopted by the heads of states that promotes um, um cooperation uh, within uh, countries and within uh, regional blocks. That I I'm sure the East African community has already bought into that. 
it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a framework that can really assist also to profile more the mountain uh, ecosystem, the mountain forest ecosystems in, um, in a, within the transboundary issues that uh, the mountain ecosystem uh, regions are, are covering particularly with regard to addressing climate change, impact on the forest, and the impact of uh, the forest on the livelihoods and the changes that are coming because of the, of the climate change. So I think that's, uh, that's one policy uh, framework, forest, forest management policy framework that was adopted by the African Union Commission last year. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, uh, um, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm sure Ladislas would have uh, a number of additions on this question. But um, I think uh, one particular uh, consideration we have to note is that uh, the mountains actually reflect uh, the multi sectoral. Uh, dimension uh, in the sense that the mountains are the center of uh, different sectors like agriculture, uh, energy, uh, uh, water, uh, um, tourism. Uh, so I, I think the existing uh, policy framework uh, because the mountains are transboundary. In fact, this is one of the, the big uh, focus for East African community, uh, the management of transboundary ecosystems. Uh, and there is also a regional East African uh, climate change policy. Uh, there is uh, currently ongoing uh, CBD uh, 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 statement leading to the next uh, CBD COP. So there is already, as far as the countries in, in East Africa are concerned, the, the, the East, African, East African community bring together uh, all the, the partners, the different uh, states uh, for uh, a shared agenda on management of natural resources. So there is a very good uh, enabling environment as the policy is concerned. Well, thank you very much, Sam. Um, maybe we can uh, quickly move to the last last question uh, about. <clears throat> can I add? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Go yes, ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. I wanted to, of course, to hear from the participants in school that uh, you are aware of the policy dialogue we have here. The forum. Let me mention that, uh, of course, the some of the as highlighted here, yeah, key ones. But also, you see the also I, I know so we have the the mountain forum that the ACOS is coordinating. For us also, we we always participate as a, as a partner. For us, this is one of the important forum in the region. But uh, as as we. You are aware, as I mentioned, you know, we have the, the Secretary General Forum on Sustainable Development. This is, covers a lot of issues of sustainable development, climate change, biodiversity, uh, Madam has mentioned the forestry, and, and other patent um, uh, agenda within the region. But uh, let me mention that uh, we have the, as a, as a region, we have the forum on the at, at country level where we coordinate the consultations as, as some has mentioned for instance we have the 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 forum for regional consultations on the climate change towards the cop 26 we have the forum on the on the, on the regional consultation on the on the biodiversity but this year we are we are going to the cbd yeah, the in the of course it will be virtual, but we have to we come out with the with the regional position. But also we have the the five working groups at a technical level: one on climate change, 
second on the by the on the by the on the, you know on terrestrial ecosystems and aquatic ecosystems. We have the forum on the on the of the parliamentarians from the regions on the disaster risk issues because also these are the areas that uh, the, our mountains ecosystem are also affected. Just mention a few that uh, we there are a lot of forums uh, discussions and uh, let me not forget that uh, you know on the climate change under the RCC in Kampara with his own an, another alliance on the climate uh, carbon markets and the climate finance as well. We have, uh, although it's not strong, we have another one with Climate Smart Agriculture uh, Alliance, but uh, we are trying to strengthen it. It has not been very, very effective. But uh, we have a lot of forum, maybe because in terms of time, uh, let me stop here. But uh, just to ensure that uh, there are many forums that engage all the stakeholders in the cause of the sustainable development agenda in the region. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can ask you another question. Uh, since you are, uh, you know, overlooking on uh, the East African region, to ask you about the, uh, are, are, are there other possibilities for knowledge sharing around the region and, as, and, 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 and um, how best practices can be replicated across similar ecosystems? So we are here on knowledge sharing, right, discussing on how the, uh, different possibilities for knowledge sharing. What are they? Can you contribute to that? Mm, uh, I, I think now I will answer it in the co in the course of the of the center of excellence. I I, I must say that uh, we our knowledge sharing is is done through the the different forum. Like uh, the workshops, like the these platforms I've mentioned uh, through the research, because also here we have the bigger bigger department dealing on the research and the statistics, where we 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 share what with the funds in the region, but also on the disasters we have the we have the the the, quote, the online system on where to to communicate daily. Uh, through the media on what is what is happening in the region in, in the context of the security to the ecosystems and the, to the to the to the to people let me mention that one uh, but uh, also the knowledge sharing we as i said we 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 participate as a region including the secretariat partner states and the institutions uh, through the in, in, international fora where we like this one, where we 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 participate inside events and we share what is what we are doing to to the region. That's what I can say. But uh, to ensure that uh, there are a lot of rooms, as uh, to share the knowledge of what is happening within the region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the audience, for this uh, interesting uh, session. And. Um, for those who probably might not have a chance to uh, intervene and to provide some insights, you can always uh, uh, provide them uh, through exchange emails. And um, so now we have uh, come to good ideas on good lessons about what is going on in terms of um, restoring the landscapes, in terms of um, uh, building the, the, the livelihoods, increasing the livelihoods of people through for example, beekeeping through access to clean water, uh, through other um, activities, uh, as was mentioned. And we have also talked about um, uh, other, other, other solutions that are happening uh, around the world. Um, so now uh, we have an enabling environment at national level in terms of policy, enabling environment. We have also forums, uh, different forums, uh, regional forums, such as, for example, the 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 one uh, the one or the, the mountain forum organized by uh, Arcos and other people. We have also different uh, different different uh, frameworks. Uh, some of the challenges that have been highlighted include, for example, the the financing the financing of um, these uh, regional and uh, transboundary. Um, uh, management uh, mountain management efforts in order to um, uh, adapt more effectively to climate change. Uh, we also 
uh, want to harmonize the policies across different countries to create some harmony among policies so that we can integrate the regional resources, not at individual level as a country, but at the regional level. So we have also highlighted the fact that uh, we need uh, to emphasize and uh, strengthen the regional plans, which will of course be informed by research. We need uh, regional research cross, uh, cross country, uh, cross boundary uh, research to be able to inform um, uh, cross country uh, uh, policy and decision making for uh, effective adaptation of ecosystems and uh, communities to the effect of uh, climate change in East African region. So say thank you very much. Thank you very much for this session. I'm sorry, I'm beginning to apologize. We took um, longer than it was uh, scheduled, but I'm happy that we could be interactive in this session. So thank you very much and we appreciate everyone who contributed and we can now close the session now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you.